Okay, so it's a, it's a symbol that doesn't actually get used that much, um, which is an R with a little cross with a circle around it after it as a suffix at the bottom of the, the symbol. Um, and the R is for radius, and the cross with a circle around it is the astrological symbol for the Earth. Um, and so it's the radius of the Earth is the symbol. Yeah, it's kind of in the news again now. I mean, you know, the radius of the Earth is sort of fairly mundane, well-known quantity, um, but it's become a big issue again because people have started discovering all these planets outside the solar system. And obviously the big question that everyone wants answered is, are they like the Earth? Um, and so one of the simplest measurements that you can make is to measure the radius of them and say, well, if the radius is kind of, you know, maybe one or two times the radius of the Earth, then that's a planet that's Earth-like. Uh, whereas if it's, say, ten times the radius of the Earth, um, that's the radius of Jupiter, for example, so that's a Jupiter-like planet, so it's not like the Earth. So it's really a way of measuring whether a planet's like the Earth or not by measuring its radius in Earth radii. I mean, the whole field of, of looking at planets outside the solar system has exploded. You know, it's really only in the last, what, 15 years that we found any planets outside the solar system at all, and now we're up around four or 500 planets known outside the solar system. Uh, but the reason why it's a big story at the moment is a new satellite has gone up, uh, a telescope called Kepler, and Kepler's whole job is to try and find more and more of these exoplanets. Um, and they've just released their first results. The, the telescope's been up there for more than a year now, but they've actually just released their first results and they found about, about five planets just from the, it was sort of the first six weeks of data they looked at. Um, and there are already rumors that there are many more planets in there as well. It uses a technique um, called occultations. And the basic idea is that if you happen to have a, a, a system where you've got a star and a planet orbiting around it and it happens to be exactly edge on, then every time that the planet goes around, the planet comes between you and the star. Now, the planet's a lot smaller than the star, so it doesn't block out all the light of the star, but it blocks out a little bit of the light of the star. And so some tiny fraction of a percentage of the light, 0.1.01% of the light of the star, gets blocked out by the passage of the planet in front of it. And this uh, telescope is so sensitive that it can actually measure those tiny little dips. Now, it's a little more complicated than that because there are lots of things that can make stars vary. The sun's output varies a bit when there's a solar flare, it gets a bit brighter and so on. Um, so there's lots of ways that stars can get brighter and dimmer. But if you see this characteristic signature of the signal dipping in a periodic fashion, so regularly, uh, every time the, the something orbits around it, then you've really got a pretty strong indication that there is actually a planet in orbit around. So the neat thing about this technique is it's actually one of the few techniques you can actually use to measure the radius of a planet because, of course, the amount of light that gets blocked out depends on how big the planet actually is. Big planets block out more of the light, little planets block out less of the light. Um, and so you can actually get a pretty reliable measurement as to how big these planets actually are. Um, and they're now finally getting down to the sizes of planets that really are kind of comparable to the Earth. So with the smallest that they found uh, is about four times the radius of the Earth. So you really are getting down to now fairly Earth-like planet, still a bit bigger than the Earth, but really getting to that sort of size. It's, I mean, it's not a particularly well-defined quantity. For example, do you measure to the lowest point on Earth, which is sort of the bottom of the Pacific Ocean somewhere? Do you measure to the highest point on Earth, which is the top of a mountain somewhere? Um, do you measure to sea level? Uh, and of course, the, the Earth isn't exactly round. Because it's rotating, it actually ends up bulging out a bit in the equator. Um, so it's about 30 or 40 kilometers bigger at the equator than it is at the poles. It's a bit squashed. Um, and so there's lots of different measurements you can, ma you can make. But in terms of actually you know, comparing the size of the Earth to other things, it really doesn't matter that much. All you really need to know is that the radius of the Earth is a little less than 6,400 kilometers. Does that mean that Earth radius is a bit like the way journalists use Olympic-sized swimming pools or double-decker buses and football fields? It's just to help give an idea of scale? Exactly. It's a way of just measuring the size of things. And it's, you know, it's a useful thing, partly because it's something that sort of people can slightly relate to, but also because lying behind it there is this question, is this a planet like the Earth? And so measuring something in Earth radii gives you an immediate feeling, you know, it's four times the radius of the Earth. So it's not quite like the Earth, but it's not that different from the Earth. Or it's 20 times the radius of the Earth, then it's really not very like the Earth at all. Does something have to be similar to the size of the Earth to have Earth-like conditions? That's not really clear. I mean, the, the, what, the, the problem is there are lots of things that go into you know, whether a planet ends up like the Earth, like you know, how close it is to its star, so whether water is liquid, those kinds of things. One of the important things is what the gravity is, because obviously if the pull of gravity was you know, 10 times what it is on the Earth, then things would be a lot more squashed. If the pull of gravity is a lot less, then there's you know, the less to hold things onto the surface. So for an Earth-like planet, you probably want the pull of gravity to be comparable to the Earth. And so one way of doing that, if something is the same density as the Earth, if you want the pull of gravity to be the same, then it really has to be more or less the same size. Now, one of the interesting things about these planets that are just being discovered with the Kepler satellite is that they're not all comparable in density to the Earth. 
there's this ridiculous planet out there which actually has a density that's sort of comparable to styrofoam, incredibly low density planet. Um, so actually you could end up with Earth-like gravity on a planet which is a completely different size from the Earth. So in the light of these new discoveries, we may actually have to kind of change our views a bit about what planets really are Earth-like. It, no, it's not a new question at all. People have worried about it. I mean, ever since basically, ever since you started thinking that the Earth might be round, then the obvious question to ask is, well, if it's round, what's its radius? Um, and so the first sort of scientific attempt to measure the radius of the Earth was made by a Greek guy, Eratosthenes, about uh, 200 BC. And uh, he came up with this very clever, he's an amazing guy. He was a, an athlete, he was interested in geography, he was interested in astronomy, mathematics. So of course, sort of uh, amazing wide range of things he did. But one of the things he did just along the way was measure the, the size of the Earth. And the way he did it was very clever. Um, essentially, he looked at how high the sun was in the sky where he lived, and then went a few hundred miles north and measured on the, the, same, on the same day at the same time, or got a friend to do it, because obviously you couldn't get there instantly, to measure how, far, how high the sun was in the sky on the same day. And of course, as you go around the surface of the Earth, you know, if the sun's overhead in one place, if you go north, the sun's no longer overhead. It's a bit sort of lower in the sky. And so you can actually figure out, in going these few hundred miles, what fraction of the circumference of the Earth he'd actually gone around. And since he knew the sun circumference was, you know, two pi times the radius, once he'd figured out what fraction of the circumference he'd gone around, he could figure out what the whole circumference was, um, and hence figure out what the radius of the Earth was. And he actually got an answer that was right to within a few percent by making that measurement. And, and that was the kind of the, the classic measurement of the, of the radius of the Earth for, for centuries afterwards.